Wedged between Flame Boy's vape and Sig in a piggly wiggly grocery store in desperate need of power washing, Safe Haven Thrift Shop had stood as a beacon for the battered women of Beaufort County since 1998. Ms. Bueller Mumford had dedicated her last 20 years to managing the business, sorting inventory, keeping the books, and most importantly, feeding the birds. That's how she referred to the girls, her little birds, flown from their metaphorical cages and lost in the big, wide world. Sent by the Center for Victims of Domestic Violence, the girls would show up for their shifts, roughed up, nervous, and down on their luck. Beulah Mumford, with her maternal gruffness, offered a space for them to catch their breath, earn a wage, and when they were ready, to tell their story. Safe Haven was not fancy, the store overflowed with second-hand items, lined with wall-to-wall -wall clothing racks and held a residual scent reminiscent of attic, but the safe haven break room was a special. Hideaway from reality. Plush. Couches formed an inviting square amidst the typical clutter of a stockroom and a bright yellow table remained perpetually stocked with fresh coffee and a pan of Beulah's famous cheese biscuits. She'd seen a lot of broken women come and go, and did her best to put them back together, but sometimes all she could do was put a little meat on their bones and a jolt in their step. Quiet and resilient, Rosita had been working there for four months, one of the longest stints of most of the girls. Rosita worked hard, often showing up to her shift with her infant strapped to her chest, swaying and humming while she tagged and sorted. She spoke little, and never a negative word about her husband Paolo, though he was the reason for the jagged scar across her chest. Miss Bueller knew she still loved him and longed to move back in together after he sobered up. He'd been making some progress, and Beulah hoped it stuck, for Rosita's and the baby's sake. Some of the other girls came and went and came again like the cycles of the moon, always reassuring Ms. Beulah it would be the last time. But the old woman knew better. No matter how many broken hearts and broken bones they endured, they kept crawling back, unable to resist the pull of those men and their demons. Ms. Beulah knew the struggle well. She remembered the years she'd spent wondering which version of her husband she'd come home to, the smooth-talking romantic who spun her around the kitchen and told her she was an angel, or the who once smelled like whiskey and liked to play with fire. It took her nearly dying to break out of his spell and her own delusion, but now she was free, free to sit behind her counter and watch over her little birds. A tangle of bronze Christmas bells jingled as the door opened and a gum-popping, pink-haired girl bounced in, her smooth skin shadowed by a mottled purple bruise. Crystal was the newest bird, and Crystal liked her cage. Beulah glanced up from her crossword puzzle. You late, honey. Crystal rushed by the counter, leaving a trail of cheap perfume, and tossed her bag in the break room, returning with a mouthful of biscuit. I'm sorry, Ms. Beulah, won't happen again. Gooey cheese hung suspended from her mouth. Miss Beulah rolled her eyes at the girl, then squinted at Crystal's poor attempt to cover the bruise on her face with makeup. Millimeter, she shook her head, you'd better stick to sunglasses little Miss Maybelline. That face mud ain't done nothing but make you look like you caught some kind of plague. Rosita chuckled from the around the corner. 
Crystal flipped her pink curls, inspecting her face in a mirror by the jewelry display. Yep, I guess I really upset him this time. The other women exchanged glances. Ms. Bueller leaned forward. Little girl, it don't matter if you called him a shit-eating rattlesnake, a real man don't hit girls. You're right, you're right, no excuses, Ms. Bueller, Crystal said, popping in earbuds and swiping through her music. Ms. Bueller's face contorted into that of an even older woman, her voice haggard. She reached up and plucked one out of her ear. Now you listen here. You've done given that boy a second, a third, a fourth chance. She poked a gentle finger at the girl's temple. You smarter than this. You better than this. I know you can't see it now, but if you chain yourself to a bad one, you gonna miss out on a beautiful life. Crystal smiled and looked younger than her 18 years. Thanks, Ms. Bueller. I know you're right. But I'm not going back. Really, I mean it this time. Ms. Bueller squeezed her shoulder. A light, now get on over there and help Rosita. Sitting here running your mouth. Crystal grinned. Ms. Bueller settled back in her rolling chair behind the counter and returned to her crossword book, pen tapping against the counter. The fermented bean curd, she muttered. Crystal pulled out an earbud, what did you call me? Ms. Bueller's eyes didn't leave her paper, eleven down ends in eat the fermented bean curd. Crystal laughed, shaking her head, Ms. Bueller, we really need to make you a Facebook. The bells on the door came to life again as a leggy woman in a baseball hat poked her head in. Ms. Bueller glanced up. Can't park that there, honey bun, she called across the store. Oh, my apologies, I won't be here long. The woman propped the door open with her hip. I just have quite a few boxes to donate and was wondering where to bring them. Is there a back entrance or? Nope, right over here is fine. She gestured to an open space near the back. Let me have one of the girls come and help you. Great. The woman disappeared back out into the parking lot. Rosita stepped from the break room, diaper bag in hand. I am taking baby back now for nap, Mrs. Bueller. See you tomorrow. Not before I get my sugar, you don't. Miss Bueller rose from her chair, groaning as her knees cracked the microfiber cushion underneath her expanding toward the ceiling. She hobbled over to the baby bouncing on Rosita's hip. He kicked and giggled when she tickled his toes. Okay, okay, use free now. Go on. Be safe. Ms. Bueller located Crystal and sent her out to help the woman with her donations. They returned a moment later with two boxes the size of industrial microwaves and made four or five more trips with an equally large haul. Crystal set down her last box and wiped sweat from her forehead. You got a lot of stuff, miss. The middle-aged woman wasn't offended by Chrysotil's directness, but chuckled. Oh, you have no idea. This is just the last of it. Miss Bueller peered at the pile of boxes. 
Didn't do too well at your yard sale, I take it. Oh no, it's not like that. I just don't have room for any of this anymore. She poked a thumb toward the parking lot. I'm only keeping what I can fit into that girl right there. Miss Bueller looked past the woman at the brown and beige striped Winnebago motorhome straddling two parking spaces in Beaufort's south side shopping plaza. A bumper sticker shouted, Take me to the mountains in a blocky green font. That be your new home now? Ms. Bueller asked. Yes, mm. It's a long story, but my husband recently passed. He battled cancer for years and after he died, I just didn't want to be alone in that big house anymore. The girl and the old woman expressed their condolences. So, I sold the house, bought this RV, and planned to go to all of my John's favourite places. Just to feel a little bit of his spirit again, you know. The woman's eyes grew misty. We were married for thirty wonderful years, and he was such a good man. He picked me flowers every day, until he couldn't walk anymore. Miss Bueller reached behind the counter to offer the woman a box of tissues. Behind them, Crystal fingered a flap on one of the boxes and pulled out a pair of black Jimmy Chews and a pinstriped blazer. She looked up at the woman and took in her leather sandals and Life is Good t-shirt. Sorry for saying so, but you don't strike me as a pantsuit woman. The woman laughed, well, no, I've certainly outgrown these clothes, outgrown that life. I spent twenty years clicking around in those things. Her face registered regret, but she smiled. Ms. Bueller poked one of the stiletto tips and tea scared. I do not know how you girls walk around on these little pegs. I would surely break my neck. The women laughed. The widow jiggled her keys. Well, ladies, I guess I'm off. Miss Bueller gave her hand a warm squeeze. You be safe out there, hun. I hope you find your John in all the places you go. She watched the lady manoeuvre the monstrous RV out of the parking lot, onto the highway, and off into the distance. The old woman shuffled back to her rolling chair and her crossword puzzle. She peered over at the pink-haired girl on the floor. You awfully quiet, Miss Crystal. The girl sat in a pile of blouses, Picking at a button. Jared's never given me flowers. She stood up abruptly and walked to the break room, returning after a moment with her fist clenched around something silver. I want you to take this and throw it away, Ms. Bueller. The old woman reached for the dinged up house key. I'm never going back. I mean it this time. The girl's eyes sparkled. Miss Bueller held the girl's hands in her own and looked into her eyes. I think that is a big step toward a beautiful life, little bird. Several minutes passed as the ladies carried on crystal with her sorting and hanging and Miss Bueller, her thinking and writing. The fermented bin curd, the old woman mumbled to herself, scratching her head. Miss Bueller, Crystal called from behind a rack of dresses, the answer is tofu cheese. Miss Bueller scribbled on her paper and sat back, her puzzle now complete. Well, look at that. I told you you were smart, didn't I? 
Crystal doubled over, giggling. I googled it, Ms. Bueller.